Hi there and welcome to today's vlog. I just love to read biographies and particularly biographies of uh, Christians, those who follow Jesus and to see how God worked in their lives and how they came through times of struggle and tribulation uh, to be a witness for Jesus. And uh, the book I've just finished reading is this one. It's called A Small Price to Pay. It's about the life of someone called Mikhail Korev. He was born in the year 1931 in the Soviet Union. His father was a, a strong believer. And as I'm sure you are aware, in those days particularly, and I guess to, still to some extent in that part of the world and in many parts of the world to be a Christian is to potentially face persecution because of your faith and his father was uh, arrested simply because he was uh, a leader of a, a church he was put in prison and sadly he died when Mikhail was quite young but uh, Mikhail's mother uh, continued that nurture of her, her son and had his two sisters and uh, brought them up in the Christian faith, brought them up to pray uh, uh, day by day and to trust in God, even though times are really hard. There was sometimes no food to put on the table. And uh, Mikhail grew in faith and uh, became part of his church leadership. <clears throat> and uh, excuse me, he felt called by God to travel throughout the Soviet Union, encouraging uh, churches and, and individual Christians. The state was trying to crush Christianity, trying to take over the church. And so they put in their own leaders, church leaders, people who weren't people of faith. And um, Mikhail and others felt that they couldn't stay, remain, remain part of the um, state-run church, but had to be... Uh, more free to uh, make disciples. There was a, a regulation that no children, no young people could be included in church services. The, the, the government didn't want children to be, as they call it, indoctrinated. Anyway, Mikhail became a church leader traveling throughout the Soviet Union. He knew the risks that he faced by doing that and he was arrested on, on several occasions. He spent uh, some years in prison sometimes in horrific conditions. But uh, despite the fact that he couldn't at that time fulfill his calling to um, travel around encouraging the believers and uh, sharing the gospel, it was a bit like Paul. Uh, he found himself in prison, yet even then he used the opportunity to share his faith with fellow prisoners, some of them who were really bad people and uh, violent people. Yet uh, many of them called him holy man. They recognised there was something in him that was different. And uh, quite a number of them uh, came to faith through him, um, wanted him to pray for them. Um, in fact, there was one occasion where he was put in this prison cell with these three really violent uh, criminals. And uh, their normal rule was to... Uh, torture any fellow prisoner to try and get money and other things out of them and uh, after a while they said to the prison guards you've got to take this man out of our cell we, we just can't do our normal stuff with him around uh, he's affecting what we do so Mikhail Korev suffered greatly he was separated from his family for long periods of time not only in prison but also traveling around sharing the gospel but he followed what he felt was God's call on his life. And I want to just read to you uh, a bit right towards the end of the book uh, as he comes out of prison uh, and on another, uh, another occasion. This is where the book draws to a, a close. He died, I believe, in 2012, although this book was published in the 90s. So he, he meets up eventually with his wife and his three sons, and it's a, a joyful reunion. Come, I motioned with my arms, let us kneel in a circle and thank God that we have been worth, counted worthy to suffer, even in this small way, small way he calls it, we wouldn't call it a small way, for the sake 
of the kingdom of God. It has been but a small price to pay for all that he has done for us. May it never enter our minds that we have done anything more than our duty. We knelt in prayer in our little apartment. My sons, grown now and having made their personal choices to follow God, prayed. Vera, my steadfast companion, uh, uh, that's his wife, in separation, prayed. Finally, I prayed and thanked God for his goodness in allowing me to be back home with my dear family again. On my birthday, we poured out our gratitude to our Heavenly Father. Outside, the black night hid the past as well as the future. I did not know what might still happen to us, but I committed all unknowns to God. He had never let me down. He had never forsaken me in my deepest need. What a great testimony from someone who actually suffered greatly, but he knew that God was always with him. He'd never let him down. May we too know that promise of God, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. God is with us even in the toughest of times. So God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today.